What's My Line? Brought to you by Geritol, the high-potency vitamin iron-rich tonic in liquid or tablets to help you feel stronger. And now, let's all play What's My Line? And now, from New York, let's meet our What's My Line panel. First, the delightful star of stage and television, Miss Arlene Francis. And now, that very entertaining comedian who brightens the corner where he is, Mr. Buddy Hackett. And now a syndicated columnist from the New York Journal American who has a wealth of information and a great source of things that people tell him, Mr. Dorothy Kilgallen. A man with even more wealth and more information, Mr. Bennett <laughs> When you hobnod with an erudite gentleman like our panel moderator, John Daly, you pick up all kinds of stray and wonderful information. For instance, he just told us what happened one afternoon at the Roman Forum when Julius Caesar met Brutus. I think he was there in person, as a matter of fact. Uh, Brutus asked Julius Caesar, how many hamburgers did you have for lunch today? And Caesar answered, et tu, Brute. Just tell us that is John Charles Davis. <laughs> Yon Cepheus hath a lean and hungry look. Man. Bennett, I think they should have kept you down there in New Mexico and Utah, not let you come home. Buddy Hackett, nice to see you, sir. Thank you. Trust you enjoy the next half hour? Well, I certainly didn't like the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> but it gets better as it goes along, buddy. We've got some very interesting occupations. We will also have a famous mystery guest before my friends on the panel a little bit later in the program, and we'll meet our first challenger after this word. And now to meet our first contestant. Will you enter and sign in, please? Frederick Baker, right, sir? <laughs> All right. Mr. Baker, would you tell us where you're from? Uh, Stratford for Avon, England. Oh, well, how nice. This is a happy time to have you as a visitor. Thursday is Shakespeare's 400th uh, anniversary. That's well, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Oh, yes, sir. Nice to have you with us, sir. Mr. May, may I present the panel, Mr. Baker? Nice to meet you. Now, would you join me over here, please, and we'll uh, tell the audience at home and the audience in the theater exactly what your yes. line is. <laughs> We can tell you that Mr. Baker is salaried and deals in a service. And we'll begin the general questioning with uh, Dorothy Kilgallen. Uh, Mr. Baker, uh, in your work, do you meet many tourists? Quite a number, yes. I thought it would be difficult in Stratford-on-Avon not to, wouldn't it? It would, really, yes. Uh, do you ever work in the church uh, where uh, Shakespeare is entombed? No, never. No. That's one down and nine to go, Mr. Sir. Mr. Baker, at a preview of the World's Fair the other day, I encountered a great many Englishmen wandering about. I wonder if you have anything whatever to do with the fair that's opening on Wednesday. Yes. Here in New York. The World's Fair here in New York. Oh, no. Oh, no, 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 no,
You have a particularly cherubic countenance, Mr. Baker. Does what you do make people happy? Uh, yes. I believe so, anyway. <laughs> do you have anything whatsoever to do with food and drink? No. No? Three down and seven to go, no Mr. Word. Hackett. No food and drink? How does he live? <laughs> <laughs> he looks like he had some someplace. <laughs> uh, this service that you give, is it more to one person than to others? No. No. Four down and six no. to go, Miss Kilgallen. Could we all enjoy your services if we were in the right place? Oh, yes, you would, yes. Would you well, ever... I hope so, anyway. Would you ever show us anything? Yes. Would you talk to us? I, I might do, yes. I might. You might talk? <laughs> I might talk, yes. Well, uh, am I to infer, then, that you could render your service without talking? Uh, oh, no. No, but I think that we'll not call that a formal no. We will agree that uh, uh, Mr. Baker would tell you something and uh, that he would talk in all likelihood. Uh, may I rule out everything that has to do with uh, guiding people around to Shakespeare territory in your work? Yes. You do something else. Yes. Do you do it in Stratford-on-Avon? Yes. Oh, yes. Uh, and this service is not particularly associated with a product, I gather? With a product, no, it is not. No, 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 no product, no. Uh, do you do your work indoors? Uh, indoors and out. I see. Uh, may I rule out that you have anything to do with a vehicle of any kind? Uh, no. Oh, you do Let have to do have, with a vehicle. You do have something to do with a vehicle. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. Sometimes. Yeah. Sometimes. Mm -hmm. That's five down and five to go, Mr. Sir. Mr. Baker, have you anything whatever to do with that beautiful Shakespeare Memorial Theater on the banks of the river there? Uh, no. no. Six down and four to go, Miss Francis. Is this vehicle that you have something to do with part of your work? It does come into it. It does come into the oh, work? And that's a very good answer. It does come into it. It is uh -huh. not come necessarily... <laughs> Revelatory. Uh -huh. yes. uh, but you, you could do your job, perhaps, and that would only be part of it, the vehicle. Is that correct? Yes, that is so. Uh -huh. Are you, when you are not in the vehicle, are you on your feet during your job? Very much so, yes. Uh-huh. Uh, do you show people anything? No, no, no. Not seven down and three to go, Mr. Hackett? Well, I think it, do we establish that the vehicle is one big enough for him to get into? Was that established? We haven't established it. <laughs> oh, I, I don't think so. I would say that this vehicle, uh, is this vehicle smaller than, say, an automobile? Oh, yes, rather. Smaller than an Smaller, automobile. Oh, yes. And, uh, did I, am I right in saying this vehicle does not have an engine of any kind? Quite so. It doesn't. Then it could be like the kind of a vehicle that would be used to sweep things into or to like pick up leaves with, like if you were, uh, 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 yeah, like a wheelbarrow. Uh, oh, no. <laughs> no, that's eight down and two to go, Miss Hugh Gallagher. I'm not finished with what I want to. Uh, Mr. No. Baker, uh, do you ever do any of your work on or near the water? Sometimes, yes, sometimes. Uh, is your work in any way connected with tourism directly? Is it connected with tourism directly? Not directly, I mean, you no. Know. Nine directly. down and one no, to go, no. Mr. Sir. Mr. Baker, we haven't established yet whether or not you work for a profit-making organization, have we? No. May I assume that it is not a profit-making organization? Definitely not a profit. Do you wear some kind of a uniform, Mr. Baker? Oh, yes. Yes. Are you connected at all with the constabulary in Avon? No, not whatever, no. No, that's ten down and no, no more to go, and I think better I than open the door. It's a real tough one for you to get. Mr. Baker is the town crier of Stratford upon Avon. Yeah. Yeah. Is the vehicle a bicycle? Beg pardon? Is the vehicle a bicycle? What is the vehicle? What is what is the vehicle? Well, it's a car. It's a, a smaller what? car. It's, it's a small. A uh, car. Oh, a small car. Yeah. And he rings. Would he do the town crier for us with the bell? Oh, and he don't, not with the bell. Just, just make the, the sound. Yes. Could you, you do, do that do for it? us? How you, uh, the way you do it on, in Stratford upon Avon? Oh, yes, rather, yes. Would you do that for us? Yes. Sure, I get the bell like this first, and then I shout, 
Oh, yes! Oh, yes! And on Thursday, I shall be calling the lunch for the Duke of Edinburgh. You see? You then I shall start off with... Oh, yes! Oh, yes! Your Royal Highness, Your Excellencies, my Lord Mayor, Your Worship, ladies and gentlemen, much of this term. No, it doesn't, actually, it, it doesn't. Mr. Baker said it, it seemed a bit ridiculous without the uniform, but there you are. I don't think it, it does no. at all. You it no, I'm coming to lunch. No. <laughs> yes, without food in the movie. Yeah, you gotta... I remember what you said about food and drink. Yes, yes. <laughs> actually, Mr. Baker flew over here to join us. He's been here since Friday. That's right, right? Yes. And he goes no, back tomorrow good. night because... He has to be there Thursday for the, uh, the 400th birthday celebration yes. in Stratford upon Avon. Thank you for yes. coming to see us, Mr. Bates. Right. Nice Hope to meet you. Take a bow. Good evening. Now to meet our second contestant. Will you enter and sign in, please? <laughs> Sydney Ann Zetkin, right? Is it Miss or Mrs? Miss. Uh, miss that. As a yes. matter of fact, you're still going to college. Yes, I right? am. But you have a vocation or an avocation yes, that we're bothered with tonight, all right? Where are you from? Beechhurst, New York. Beechhurst, New York, yes. all right. Miss Zetskin, may I present the panel? Yes. And now, would you come over here and we'll let the audience in the theater and the audience at home know exactly what your line is. We can tell you that uh, Ms. Zetkin is salaried and deals in a service, and we'll begin with uh, Bennett, sir. Ms. Zetkin, I'm on a one-track route tonight. There are all kinds of things going out, on out at the Meadows this week, including a World's Fair and the opening of Shea Stadium. Have you got anything to do with either of those activities? Yes, I do. Uh, might it be Shea Stadium? Yes, it is. Are you one of those beautiful new uniformed ushers at Shea Stadium? <laughs> They throw all the cards over because the record has been broken. Very, very good, Bennett, I must say. You go to Hofstra College? Yes, I do. Did you have... Uh, they tell me that I, I was going to go to the opening game and then the last-minute business took me away and I had to miss it. But I understand you had a lot of fun out there. Yes, it was The great exciting. game. You had a packed stadium. Yes. How did. do you like our new Shea Stadium? Oh, it's magnificent. It really is. And how do you like your work? It's a lot of fun. Why don't you tell the folks what it, what it is you wear in case... Well, I guess most everybody must have seen your picture in the paper. <laughs> yes, I was in the Times. And what do you, you wear? A... Well, I wear an 1890s costume, a derby, and a striped jacket and skirt. How are we able to stand it when the Mets finally won a game today? <laughs> <laughs> well, we don't really stand at the end of the games anyway. Neither the do Met... most of the Mets. <laughs> <laughs> The Mets won today six to nothing. And by golly, the Yankees did it today, too. This has been a good day for New York. It's about time. Well, I must say, I'm sorry we didn't give them more trouble, but uh, Bennett, unfortunately, was on the, on the meadows tonight, so that uh, he rather did us in, I think. I think so. Well, much success with college. What year are you in? I'm a freshman. Uh, you are getting good marks? Yes, I am. Good girl. <laughs> Thanks very much for being our guest Thank on West you. Florida. We'll meet tonight's mystery guest in just a moment, but first, here is a word from our sponsor. And now we come to the special feature of our program, the appearance of our mystery challenger, for which my friends on the panel are always blindfolded, as you know. Blindfolds in place, panel? Yes, yes sir. sir. Good show. Will you enter mystery challenger and sign in, please? <laughs> All right, 
as you know, panel, one question at a time, in turn moving clockwise, and we'll begin with uh, Arlene Francis. Would one find your name in the entertainment pages of the paper? Yes. Mr. Hackett. Well, shouldn't he answer Arlene first? Then <laughs> The answer was yes. Just yes. whispered the end. An Are you a male? No. That's one down to nine to go, Miss Kilgallen. I think it's a girl. <laughs> I think there's ladies here. Are you primarily a motion picture actress? Uh, I, I think it would be yes and no. But yes, certainly, and, and uh, no, if we were going to have any trouble with you about it. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Sir. Have you ever done any widely used cigarette commercials? Uh-uh. No? <laughs> That's two down and eight to go, uh -huh. Miss Francis. Uh, do you appear in clubs, nightclubs? E. Uh, Mr. Hackett? What was that? What yes. was that? Yes or no? That was yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, that was yes. C, yeah. Oh, C. Did, did I have... Nightclub? Did I have a work with you recently? E. Yes? Yes. Ha, 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 ha. Do you Say think it. you know who it is? Yeah. Say it. I think it's Edie Adams. Oh. Mad, mad, it mad. Sure was. 120 <laughs> degrees in Palm Springs, indeed. It was 120 <laughs> degrees. Oh, it surely was. That wow. was at night. <laughs> Actually, buddy, we did this. You know, you, you, you tripped us instead of uh, we tripping you because what well, we did this particularly because you'd both been in it. It's a mad, 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 mad. For mad, three mad. years in the show, I've been waiting for you to bring Joey Bishop out for me to try to guess. And oh, every man. time I sit here, I always want to say it's Joey Bishop. No, it's definitely who, not Joey Bishop. No, that ain't Joey. Joey no. has dark hair. Yeah. <laughs> it's very funny. I was driving out past Buddy's house today, and I almost stopped in, and I was eating at Boisson a little earlier and stopped at it, sir. And I said, hello, and where are you going? And you said, I'm going to work. And I said, oh, really? Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> you really fooled the rest of us, not Buddy, by not using your wonderful accents. Did you yes, the you? Well, the last time uh, we went through every one, and I, I thought... That's well, the wonderful accent, I, I don't want to embarrass you, and I don't mean to embarrass you, but Edie is now at the Empire Room of the Waldorf Astoria, and my daughter came down from college, my daughter Buncey, and oh, we, yes, were noted, you were there the we were there that night because Buncey came down from Bradford, and she said she wanted to go and hear you sing. Oh, that's nice. Edie, how'd you finish dinner so quickly? You were just beginning when I left. Well, I saw you, you, make you ran out fast, so I thought it'd be good. Not in that you. minute, you'd make anybody lose their appetite. <laughs> da, 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 da. I got one in. I got one in. I got one in, didn't I? Thank You're, you, Edie. Thank you. For so opening much. the door. And so thanks so much for coming to see us. Thank you. everybody to understand that I meant that in only one context. That's one of the sweetest men that ever walked, but when he tells a pun, what happens to your appetite? You know. <laughs> well, I'm certainly glad that it wasn't Joey. <laughs> <laughs> well, you get congratulations, I must agree, so far tonight, panel. We'll have another contestant after this word from our alternate sponsor. And now to meet a final contestant, will you enter and sign in, please? John Hannon. Right, sir? All right. Mr. Hannon, where are you from? Garden City, New York. Garden City, New York. Nice to have you with us. May I present the panel, Mr. Hannon? Now, would you join me here, and we'll let the audience in the theater and the audience at home know exactly what your line is. Panel, we can tell you that Mr. Hannon is self-employed and deals in a product 
And we'll begin the general questioning with Mr. Hackett. What a bewildering feeling is upon me. I made him for a cop as soon as I looked at him, <laughs> especially when I heard the name. Everybody named John Hannon who looks like that is a policeman, except him. <laughs> He's in a product. Is this product something to eat? Because I'm getting hungry now. <laughs> no. 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 What oh, does nice to go, Miss Kilgallen? Uh, Mr. Hannon, is it something that any of us on the panel might use? Yes. Is it considered more useful than purely luxurious? No. no. Two down a date to go, Mr. Sir. Mr. Hannon, one of my great publishing com competitors is located in Garden City. That's Doubleday. May I presume you have nothing whatever to do with Doubleday? I have nothing to do with Doubleday. Well, maybe it's good, maybe it isn't. <laughs> uh, is the product that you are connected with usable by both sexes? Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, would it be found inside our homes? It could be. Could it also be found outside the home? Yes. Is there anything seasonable about the product that you make? Yes. Would it be used more in the spring and summer than in the fall and winter? Yes. Would it be used in any athletic or entertainment endeavor? Yes. An athletic endeavor of some kind? Yes. Is it a game played by more than one person? No. <laughs> oh, golf. Uh, <laughs> I want to see your hands. Yeah, I'll give you the no stand. This does not mean that the, the product generally could not be used by more than one person at the same time if there were enough products and enough people around. We would agree to that, right? What? Yes. Three down what? and seven to go, Miss Fred. Did that confuse John. you all? Yes. No. That's fine. That's what it was supposed to do. Ordinarily, one person would use this, but there could be times when more than one. Is that what you were saying? If they were enough products. If they all enough. had one. Yeah. Well, yeah, what we're just trying to say is that it's not, you're not necessarily something done in isolation. I didn't want to leave that impression. Ah, I see. It could be a group movement. Yes, could be a group movement. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. Uh, is it, uh, does it move around, this product, rather than stay in a stationary position? Yes. Um, does it have wheels? No. That makes it four down and six to go, Mr. Hackett. Does this product come in a set? No. Five down and five to go, Miss Kilgallen. Does this product move it around because so move around because somebody has propelled it in some manner by Sometimes. pushing it or throwing it or kicking it no. or something? That's fine. That's six down and four to go, Mr. Sir. Then can we rule out golf? Yes. Can we rule out table tennis? Yes. Can we rule out any kind of bowling or croquet? Yes. What's left? Has <laughs> <laughs> that anything to do with any sport that's done on the water? Yes. That's what it is. Oh, is it any kind of a conveyance that people can climb into when they get to the water? No. That makes it seven down and three to go, Miss Francis. They can't get into it when they get to the water. Do they get into it out at sea? No. Eight down and two to go, Mr. Hackett. Do they get on them like water yes. skis? Water is skis? No. Them? No. Nine down and one to go, Mr. Joe Gallon. You, but you do get on them. Surfboards? Yes. Right. <laughs> Mr. Oh, Hannon well makes, makes surfboards, Hannon surfboards, in, in Garden City. And one thing, I've, I was surprised, I always assumed they were made of wood, but yours are, are plastic, aren't they? Well, they used to be made of um, wood originally, uh, oh, harder woods like uh, what they call willy willy woods in the uh, island, but then uh, balsa wood, and uh, lately they're made of uh, polyurethane foam and fiberglass. I beg your pardon? Polyurethane foam. Mm -hmm. You have to have a prescription to get that. <laughs> <laughs> and a lot of money. You spell them the wrong way. <laughs> Pardon me? You spell them the wrong way. Who? No, you do. We used them, we used them in a picture uh, called Muscle Beach Party that I, I was in. That's I was right. playing, and we used your surfboards in there. It'd be worth it to see you on a You're surfboard. You're the first couple ever met that makes surfboards. <laughs> Thank you very much. Nice to have you. Happy picture of Buddy Hackett on a surfboard. Good night, Arlene. <laughs> Good night, dear Buddy. Thank nice you, Arlene. Had you here. Thank you. Good night, Dorothy. Good night, dear Buddy. Good night, dear Bennett. They love you out in Utah, New Mexico, John. I don't know why, but good night. <laughs> Gee. Thanks, <laughs> Bennett. And uh, may I thank all of you for being with us on What's My Line? What's My Line is a CBS Television Network production in association with Mark Goodson and Bill Thompson.
This is Johnny Olson reminding you, if you'd like to attend one of our broadcasts, write to CBS Tickets, 485 Madison Avenue, New York, New York, 10022.